welcome to Bilesma's Beat. I'm Pam Bilesma, the principal of Riverside Brookfield High School, and we're here to find out today how cardboard and calculus go together. And to tell us how that it happens is Dan Botterigo, our wonderful AP calculus teacher. Hi, Dan. Hi. All right, now you do a project with your students at the end after they take their AP test, right? Calculus AB. And they're making cardboard sculptures, and I'm intrigued by this. So talk to us a little bit about what this project's about. Um, well, it, uh, it incorporates um, some of the uh, STEM components, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and so we kind of went with uh, an engineering focus on this where they have to design uh, a three-dimensional object that's irregularly shaped um, and then they have to find the volume of it. In this classroom right now we are doing a project where we make our own shape or object and we find the cross sections of it by using calculus and the cross sections then we make a picture. Some people have chosen to make bananas or Pac-Mans or anything else and it's completely up to us what we want to make. Yeah, I saw one of these in your classroom. I'm going to go back to the one I originally saw, which catch, uh, that caught my attention. So that's over there against the wall. Let's take a walk over here. And I came in your room one day and noticed this interesting banana with uh, our little monkey here. And so somehow this is bringing the application of calculus principles to a three-dimensional three form. And was this where it all started? Uh, yeah, this was uh, one of the more artistic projects from last year, um, so I kind of kept it around. Um, and basically what you're looking at is uh, this three-dimensional object, the banana that the group created, but then they uh, made the rest of the um, kind of artistic uh, part of it uh, around that. And so a lot of students now, after seeing those, want to create something that's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, while also having kind of the calculus component of it. And the interesting thing is that sometimes uh, the students create something um, initially and then they end up uh, kind of changing what uh, it is that they wanted it to be based on what it actually looks like when they, uh, when they create it. The hardest part of the project is not making any technical errors because all the math has to be very precise or the answers won't be right. So this is kind of problem-based learning. They come up with a shape they want to create. L let me see if I got this right. And then they have to come up with the right mathematical, I don't know if it's formulas or um, what you call them, and put them together and see if it actually is going to come out the way they anticipated it. And then they have to tweak it and change the formulas right. or the solution to get the right solution, right? right. Yeah, so they, they have to, first of all, create the region based on some uh, mathematical functions. Um, you know. It, based on what they want to create, you know, so they have to kind of design this and then there's a little bit of uh, struggle for them to actually get it to look like what they want and so they kind of, you know, struggle through that component and then they actually have to come up with a plan to figure out how big of, uh, you know, the shapes to cut out, you know, and, and how to match it up and then the other part that a lot of students don't think of right away is the actual calculation phase because they have to do uh, two calculations here. They have to do one that's the theoretical calculation where they actually have to find if the shape was solid and smooth, uh, what the volume of it would be. Oh. And then they actually have to do an, an actual physical calculation. So based on the, the, the shapes of cardboard that they actually cut out, they actually have to figure out what that volume is. And some students struggle to make those values close to each other, um, and then they have to consider, well, why, why isn't it close? Is, uh, did we measure incorrectly? Is the spacing incorrect? Did we not convert units correctly? And so it ends up kind of being a real, you know, real-life engineering problem just without, um, you know, kind of the, the functionality component. You know, a lot of engineering, you know, you have constraints based on, uh, you know, some sort of functionality. And this really doesn't have any, any functionality. It's just more aesthetic. Okay, well, thanks a lot for spending time today in a math classroom doing something very unique in a college-level class. AP class means advanced placement, and these kids are prepared. They'll get college credit as long as they did well enough on the exam. So thanks for having us in your classroom. And as you can see from the big volleyball on the wall, the, uh, Dan's also our wonderful volleyball coach for boys and girls, and the boys play tonight. So, you know, always tune in and join the Bulldogs whenever you can. Thank you.